Holding an Avid Huddle session is an easy way to share high quality content with a remote team while receiving instantaneous feedback. So let's look at how to host a session. To get started, launch your Huddle compatible version of Media Composer on a local machine or in Edit On Demand. Find the project you want to share with your team and open the specific sequence for review in your record monitor. Only the contents in your currently active monitor will be shared with your Huddle participants. They won't be able to see your timeline or other parts of Media Composer. For Huddle to work as intended, it's important that timecode information is shared during playback. To enable this, go to Settings, Project, General. If it's not already selected, check Generate Ancillary Data TC on Playback, then click OK. Now you're ready to launch the Huddle session. To do this, go to Tools and Avid Huddle. A separate Huddle window will open. The first time you host a session, you're asked to log into both your Avid and Microsoft accounts. But in the future, Huddle will automatically remember the accounts and keep you logged in. Once you've logged into both, click Start a Session. This may be a good time to dock the Huddle window so it's organized with a Media Composer. After the session begins, you can then start the SRT stream. Just right-click the Hardware Software button and confirm SRT is selected. Then click the Hardware Software button again to start the broadcast. You know it's actively transmitting when the button starts blinking red. If you forget to start the SRT stream, video won't appear when the huddle session actually starts within the Teams meeting. Next, go to Microsoft Teams and join an already scheduled meeting or create a new one, just like when using Teams normally. Keep in mind that the participants you invite to the review session don't need a huddle license, Media Composer, Edit On Demand, or the Microsoft Huddle app. They only need the link to join the Teams meeting as a guest. Once all the participants join the meeting, return to Media Composer. In the Huddle window, click Launch Avid Huddle in Teams. When a second dialog box appears, click Start Sharing. If this is your first time using Huddle, Microsoft will automatically prompt you to download the Avid Huddle app on Teams. If the app has already been downloaded, then your sequence should appear within your Teams meeting. Now that you've successfully started the Huddle session, it's time to begin the review process. During a session, the host controls video playback through Media Composer, while audio plays back through the Teams meeting. If wanted, at the bottom of the screen, there's an option to adjust or mute the audio during playback. Next to that is an option for hosts and participants to make the sequence full screen for themselves. But it does take away the ability to leave comments and use other huddle features during the review session. On the right side of the screen, participants can use this side panel to create annotations about the video. Comments are posted with a time code of whenever they started being typed, so they align to the correct location. If participants want to discuss a scene more in depth or use drawing tools, it's best for the host to pause playback in Media Composer. To give more detailed feedback, participants can use the tool set above the video. These tools let the user move a temporary pointer, mark the screen with a pen, Highlight an area of the screen. Erase any marks. And change their pen's color. When a participant controls the tools, they're the only one who can use them to draw directly on the video. If another participant wants to take control of the tools, they can click Draw and then the tools will appear on their screen. However, no matter who controls the tools, participants can always type comments in the right side panel. 
once participants have finished making any drawings for a particular scene, anyone can use the Add Drawings to Annotation button to create a screenshot that gets added to the side panel and the session summary. This way, the host can refer to the drawings even after the meeting ends. Before resuming playback, it's best to erase any drawings left on the screen so they don't obstruct the video when the review continues. While reviewing, the host can easily switch between different sequences in the same project if they're using Media Composer 2024.6 or newer. When the host changes sequences in Media Composer, the comments and screenshots for the first sequence will be stored out of view. Then only the second sequence's annotations will be visible to the team. That said, if the host switches back to the original sequence, its comments and screenshots will reappear in the side panel. Hosts using an older version of Media Composer can still review multiple sequences, but their annotations won't be synced to the respective sequence. Once the team has finished reviewing a project, the host can end the huddle session in Teams using the Close Session button in the upper left. After confirming you want to end the session, a screen appears giving you two ways to download the session summaries, either via PDF or text. The PDF version contains the review session's comments and screenshots, while the text version shows comments, which can later be turned into markers. If you decide to download one or both, they'll be saved to your computer's downloads folder. You can use them in the future when making any change requests to the sequence. With that, you've now successfully hosted your first of hopefully many huddle sessions. <laughs> <laughs>